you told me, you know, six years ago, that I'd be saying there's a bipedal animal running around out here. I send you some of the snow to the four foot snow mm -hmm. tracks. You know, a bipedal animal running around out here, you'd have my wife, my chainsaw, my dog, my truck, my. <laughs> you say, you know, you say, Lee, in six years you're gonna be saying there's a bipedal dogman running around your hayfield. I go, yeah, what, what do you want back? You know. This episode, the CAPS team travels to southern Wisconsin to meet with Lee Hample, a hayfield farmer whose property backs up to the infamous Bray Road, home of the Beast of Bray Road, a six-foot-tall bipedal dogman creature that was made famous by renowned author Linda Godfrey in the early 1990s. But this episode is not about Bray Road, or the dogman in particular, oh no. It seems that Lee's property has a lot more going on than just a would-be werewolf, as if that wasn't enough. Lee and his property have been featured on several cable television shows that came out to investigate the strange goings-on, and his property has been compared to another famous ranch that you may be familiar with, being the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Lee invited the team out to his property for a tour and to give us a little history of the things that have been happening since he purchased the property. So I bought this in 2007. But I didn't farm here until 2011. I made a mistake. I cut hay and was ready to bail when the bears were playing the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> All my Illinois help said, no, we're, no, the bears are playing. <laughs> and my, I had two guys in Wisconsin help me. I said, no, Wisconsin, no, Packers are playing. Oh, she, so I, <laughs> Stopped and got those guys, and they said, "This." I said, "You know, um, just help me load it and to get on the wagons." But then they helped me unload it too. But we were standing at the end of my barn, looking out the field, and and Jason says, "You know, this is where the Beast of Bray Road lives." And I go, "Oh, you're so full of shit." You know? <laughs> she said, "Right? What are you talking about? The Dog Man lives right back there." I go, "You're so, you know." He goes. And my my youngest son Jason he 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 helps me and he lives he lives in a farm west in Wakanda. He said like in 2008 or nine he said you know there's some crazy creature up there running around your farm. I go yeah well, I see it, I'll let you know you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. I said yes. Yeah. So, you know my wife and my daughter and my mother-in-law saw it on Bowers Road just just really just past that farm, 4:30 in the afternoon and was standing in the middle of the road, six feet tall. And then two legs and a dog man and, and it jumped 20 feet to the edge of the cornfield and went and jumped. I go, what are they do? You, you, so your so your wife smokes and there's <laughs> cocaine and meth and you know, no no my mother-in-law. Okay, your mother-in-law may not. Okay, all right. <laughs> he said, well, he said, and saw it on Bray Road and I go, because he was farming land. Yeah, he saw it on Bray Road eating a raccoon. And I go, what? Mm. You're so full of crap. You know, he goes, no, no, no. Everybody says it lives back here, you know. And uh, that was September 2013. And so I started, I was going to another farm up there to a farm party like a couple days later, and I got a raccoon. The raccoon on the side of the road, and I threw it out there. 
and I threw it on my fence line, I'll show you. And I came back the next day and here he's cut open and his intestines are gone. I go, well, that's really weird. Okay, mm -hmm. Hawk could do this, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, the grass was like this, was this tall. It was just down in there, you know. Okay, oh, so that's pretty weird. You know, and a couple of days later I came back and now it's shoved over to the side and it's starting to get maggoty, you know, it's starting to get de decay. And it's still inside this thing. Well, I found a 20 pound badger on 12, so I threw that down in the hole. I came back two days later, here's this dumb raccoon. He's 15 feet away and a little piled up. And the 20 pound badger, he's 10 feet away over there. And I go, okay, this isn't a hawk. <laughs> and the, the, this nest, I call it, or whatever, all this grass is not knocked down. Don't nobody get those, those out of there was to reach down and pick them up. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, this is not a hawk. Hawk can't pick up a 20 pound badger. No, they can't do it. They can't pick up a mag uh, mm -hmm. raccoon that's all starting to decay and put over a little pile. So I, put, I started putting out cameras. And that's my saga. So come on. <laughs>one night here i've seen lots of lights out here i have hundreds hundreds of lights pictures but um so over there um so you see. <laughs> all right look, look back there now the corn this was in i think july or august when we saw this the corn is five feet tall that little bush if you go back there's a little bush back there that's eight feet tall Okay. That little bush is eight feet tall. All right. Now, here's the lights that came one night there. You okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. And now there, there's, we're looking right over there. Oh, wow. Now watch. These lights started coming along. They go above that bush. They go behind those trees. Then they come in front of that light. Another orb came through. And, and, and there's no, there's nothing there. I mean, hmm. I mean, the, 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 I've never seen the road up. Eleven is up there, but we had five, six feet of corn, and then all the, all the, all the, um, the woods over there was all heavy. You know, was all leaves on it. So sure. Okay. See, this one there looks like headlights, like a car park. I know. But, but the other one doesn't. But the other is, one's too much. This is seven and a half feet off the ground. We got it marked over there. Huh. Jeffrey and I came. That's seven and a half feet off the ground. Did you see any, like, like, like That one looks like, weird. But there can't be a car headlights in a cornfield. Was there any kind that of, like, a cornfield. Like crop or anything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was five feet, six feet of corn. That was bent over from when they, no, like, fell no, through it? No, or? nothing. What no. about, like, a harvester? Wasn't harvested in July. They just harvested it two weeks ago. Okay. Just saw it two. And this was at what time? Ten twenty at night. I mean, they, they could be harvesting, but yeah. they, but you're not picking corn in July. Yeah. Okay, so 2016. There's a smell that comes out here, and it's putrid. I mean, it's rotten. Uh, rotten skunk dog urine it's terrible mm -hmm. um in 2016 i was bailing hay and there was a tractor sitting here my alice which i can show you something about, oh no my neighbor my neighbor's working on it but uh i'm putting the radar in. but i walk back here and i'm walking and i'm coming the tractor is sitting here and it was like 6 30 at night so it wasn't dark and i'm just getting to the tractor and and uh which was sitting right here. I'm getting the tractor and that smell hits me. You know? Oh god, it's that smell. It, it gets in your it gets in your nose. You can't get rid of it, you know? It, it, it's putrid. So I jump on the tractor, start the tractor, and the smell's coming right from over from this wetland over here. So I am I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this guy. I'm seeing this guy. So I start the tractor. I take off I can throw it in third second gear and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll go right through this front. I'll go right here. I get right here. <laughs> the tractor. <laughs> what? 
Wow. Huh. Almost. I pulled a choke out, it started missing. I pulled the choke out. I go, okay, you know, I'm playing with the gas and the clutch. I put it in first gear and, you know, and then I turn, I go up the lane, and I call those two trees right there, the trees of weirdness, because it all happens on this side. I got like 100 feet past them, the tractor ran good all the way home, ran good for the last three years. <laughs> so, I was gonna, I was what, gonna see that guy. <laughs> tell me more about the tractor. Is it uh, gas, electric? Is gas, it... tractor, it's a gas. 1947 Alice, so it doesn't have a, it's got so it's a, a older, so older it's not like an electrical system in it or anything. Well, it has an electric, but it has a, it has an alternator. But, yeah, but it's not more like computerized and stuff. No, yeah. no. So it's more just a combustion, right. nuts and bolts runs. Right, and it's got yeah. a generator, and it's got a, you know, an, or it's got an alternator, and, and um, uh, points and plugs. And, well, I know like a lot of the times they say like um, creatures like the dog man, Bigfoot and stuff have electromagnetic fields and they'll disrupt computers and other things, cameras, phones, anything like that. So if it's a newer tractor, it would it would make more sense that it would do that. But if it's an older tractor, yeah, 1947 Alice yeah. counters. Yeah, you wouldn't have any of that more modern equipment in it. No, it would, oh, it no, no. With, yeah. no, it's very, it's yeah. very, yeah. And, and you know, and, and I don't know anything about these other areas. I mean, people say, well, oh, that happened here. You know, you know G Jim McEnroy. No, I don't know any of these people. I, I approach this when it st things started happening. Okay, I've, I've been outdoors a lot. I grew up on a farm. I taught, but I was outdoors a lot. Okay, these are things that are happening that aren't animals. These are things that happening that I, you know, I'm, the camera, the scopes, I sent them with Jeffrey to northern Wisconsin. He was up there for two weeks, looked for hours, never saw any orbs. I took them to my home in Wakanda, looked all around the forest preserve for hours, never saw any orbs. I come here, then and here, and there's orbs. <laughs> so, I mean, so I, I do, you know, I, I get false triggers in my in my game cameras, and I took one to down to second part of my home farm, and was out for three weeks, not one false trigger. I took one to, um, and that one I laugh on. And I took one to Crystal Lake, put my godson. He put it out for a couple three weeks, one maybe one false trigger. I'll get hundreds of false triggers, hundreds. I mean, false triggers, crazy false triggers. So, you know, so I tried it. I approached it from, you know, from a scientist, from a math major, chemistry minor. So that's what I approached it from. And I don't have any baggage from, like, the smell hit me. I was out here in 2013, and we see these tracks. Nobody knows what these tracks are either. Um, and and a, 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 my, a guy was helping me, he's 40 years old, and we were over there, and and I, I and that's when that raccoon started missing, disappearing, or started moving around. So we walked in there, and we started seeing tracks. These are five-toed, seven-pad tracks. Yeah, the ones in the snow I showed her, I think. Okay, all right. And uh, so, so we're, there's one. Um, oh, yeah. And, and they tell me that's a double hit. Well, then I've tracked this thing a half mile, and it's not a double hit. I mean, it never runs a double hit. You know? mm -hmm. uh, the Field Museum in Chicago, they told they sent me to a guy out in, in Utah, and he's a track expert. And so I said, okay, here I got this track. And he said, oh, he said, okay, he said, he said another another animal stepped on top of it. Mm -hmm. So he's got the blue and the red. Mm -hmm. Okay, then that has occurred. Well, first of all, he's got a, a, a print there, which doesn't exist. Now look at the blue. Look at that's a funny, look at that. There's that, and then up here is another one. That's not any track. I mean, he's... he's mm -hmm. and so, so he says, okay, that was a, not a double hit because it's sideways. Another animal track down there. In 2016, the DNR knew it. They, been, they yeah. were here. They told me that that was an abnormal coyote track. And he's, and the other one he said was a mouse digging a hole. And, and I said, well, he dug it every three feet. Well, that's not, he said, Lee, that's not an animal track. 
And the DNR guy's looking at it. He goes, Lisa, I'm looking at it. He goes, well, a mouse or a chipmunk or something dug holes. It does look like that. It's I scooped yeah. out, you know, and uh, I have a lot of up here. But I said, well, but every three feet? He goes, well, it's not an animal trap. And he said, these are abnormal coyote traps. Okay, well, and I have, have front feet tracks, too. And he said, I said, what about, because every now and then when I'm tracking, I'll see these front feet. And, mm -hmm. and they're, they're like claws and stuff. They got big claws on them. And uh, he said, well, that, that's a bulbous raccoon. But even so, if you have a raccoon, you have coyotes and stuff, why aren't you getting pictures of it then? Well, yeah, that's right. You know, or do you, or do you get pictures of raccoons? I get coyotes, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get okay. coyotes, yeah. I get deer, coyotes. But in the same spot where you're finding those pictures? I mean, on my camera. So, where he says that something's coming in and digging up that field. Oh, yeah, I know. And you have a, a camera sitting there. Do you have a raccoon walking through no. that area at that time? No, yeah. no. Well, this one here, this this guy landed. He landed out in my field over there, that field, um, and walked away. That's what's in your book. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have any pictures. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll try this okay. secret. Okay, it, this is you can see it was about like a uh, like a quarter eighth inch of crust, and there's a foot, and there's a foot. He landed. Then follow this crust right here, and you can see that crust coming in there. And there's a step, and there's a step. So, where does it go? Off into the woods? Went to that woods over there. Okay. And this is the picture. I I should have taken more pictures. Directly behind here, it, it, this this would be like this. It's going that way. I took this picture. That was what was directly behind where the two feet landed. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what am I looking at? Right. <laughs> nothing. There's there, nothing there. <laughs> there is, there is a, see that fault, yep. you know, that fault there? And if you look, um, it, it, I thought I could match it up. I got my other pictures up there. I thought I could match that up with that. But I should have taken, I thought I should have taken more pictures. But it, it walked off. It walked towards those woods. It, now here how far back behind it did you go okay so let's say like if, if okay, it landed I was, right straight I, I was walking over that way and then I ran into the track now these tracks when I see the tracks I'm going to send you they're straight there's no there's no drag marks and they're like from 20 inches to 48 inches long they're very distinct they don't look anything like coyote tracks I have a lot of coyote tracks and and so I was coming there, and I and, I, and I, I said, oh wow, here they are, you know. So I turned left, like I was just on the other side of this fence. I turned left and I came up to here, and they were uh, probably 30 feet from my fence line, on, and 48 feet away from my fence line. I, I, I actually marked out. I actually stepped that off. So they're 48 feet out in that field, and. There's no way they can get there with 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 that crust. Okay, so I mean, there's no way. I mean, so you started following them out here. No, it, it, I was over in the cornfield. I walked over. There. Over there? No, straight ahead. Yep. Going going west. Yep. I hit the tracks. I turned and came south. Okay, so walked you along tracks. I so looked. you you found them mid track. Yes, I did. And followed them back this way in the direction that they started. Yes. Okay. After you found the initial one where it ends yes. or it starts, yeah. how far out past that did you go at all? 100 feet. I mean, did oh, you? Okay. This is crazy. I called my brother. I said, you got to get up here. I, this thing just landed. He well, you tell me to parachute it in? I go, I, I don't know, but get up here. He goes, I, I got to do this and this. And He lives in by Sycamore, so it's an hour and a half drive. Mm -hmm. And Linda, I knew, couldn't walk out here. She, It was crusty. It was like four inches of snow. I had to walk out of here, so I said, I'll take pictures, and you know, so, but, oh, no, I looked all over, and I looked up, and maybe it could jump out of one of those trees, but they're not, they're too far, but, I, you know. Well, so that's what I was wondering, like, if, like, let's say this thing can jump 20 feet, you know, so maybe, yeah, there's no footprints there, and he, yeah, he yeah. walked off, 
but maybe he jumped like from 20 feet away, you know, but yeah. you didn't see anything. Oh, no, I can't. All. I, I yeah. walked all the way down here. I walked all, I, I, no, I, no, no, yeah, no, I, I looked all over. So, uh, Lynn and I came 11, 12, 2013. Uh -huh. um, this is 14, so that's two o'clock in the afternoon, right? And that's about when we got here. Now, if you look on my computer, this mist was here for about uh, two hours. No, more than that, about four hours. Okay, so Linda and I came this day, and we just happened to, I met her at facilities and, and for breakfast, and we came out, or for lunch, and we came out here. And we got out of the truck, and the smell was here. I go, oh, man, there's that smell, there's that smell. And she said, my God, it's a terrible smell, you know? And so Linda smelled the smell. Mm -hmm. And she said, I know, well, that's, it's a rotten dog skunk here, and I don't know, it's putrid, and it's, it's stuck. And, and I said, well, we got out of the truck. And I said, okay, I'll walk, I'll because I had a deer out. I'll walk over and see where the deer smells, all right? But we hadn't seen this. So, so we got out, and the smell was here. I walked over to the deer and looked at the deer and said, no, the deer doesn't smell. And then I came back and took out the SD card. And then Linda and I got in the car, truck, and we put it on my computer and we started looking at the SD card. Well, this thing, that mist came like 10 o'clock. And I go, well, Linda, look at the mist is here. It's 10 o'clock, the mist is here. And we're, we're going along in the computer. I go, look at, it's two o'clock. That's when we got here and the mist is still here. Now remember what I said, I got out of the truck and walked up to the smell. Beer. Yeah. You ready? Uh -huh. It was a bright, clear day. And it's weird because it's transparent. Because you can see... Semi, yeah. Watch this now. Uh -huh. It looks like it got thicker where you can't see your legs anymore. I know, I'm a half a, I'm a, half a person. And it looks like it's around you. Right. Like let's say, let's say a water drop like got on the lens of your camera. That's what I was kind of thinking. But that, that looks more solid than a water. That one does. You know, it's more, you can't even really see like your legs through it. No, I'm invisible. Yeah. It's like, it's got How do you do that? Yeah, it's almost like you can see the ground, but not your legs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had, I had a... I know he, he the guy lightened this one up and he, he said that's a he th he said there's a there's a there's an eye right there or you know a spiral light there right there mm -hmm. like a lens flare kind of yeah like yeah a, but he says it's not a lens flare kind of a rainbow yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be like uh if you're shooting like a sun or like into yeah. the sun or something yeah. you get that that well, but spiral of a light yeah this this camera was <laughs> sitting here looking right over there and I walked to the deer was laying right over there now look at this is okay so here I'm looking at the deer and saying nope there's no there's the deer doesn't smell I mean it's September 12th well, right now and the deer doesn't smell mm -hmm. all right this is 10 14 10 so 2 10 53 I turned around walked over the camera and took out the SD card like I said and look at eight seconds later it's gone it's gone. The mist is gone. No, that's interesting. <laughs> they kept getting carried away, and so I tied it up. Yep. <laughs> All right. Tie this right so here, what, right? Just even move. <laughs> tied it up. I tied it. See, I had a rope right there. Mm -hmm. Tied it and tied it up. Okay. So he 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 got mutilated the same way and look at they left the leg and I put another deer out but then look at look what they did to the to my leg to the my leg then they took the leg and it looked like the rope was and like, they cut the rope that's not no normal cut I can tell it by the looks is that you it looks like it was mm -hmm. chewed through mm, I don't know because it, it was cut it would not be yeah. that I'll show you the rope. I got the rope up there. I'll show you the rope. The rope it's, cut. Not... it's cut better than what I cut it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This this one is cut better than this one that I cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely cut. All mm -hmm. right, you guys, you 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 you. Okay, I'm ticked at you guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do this. Like a five ton strap. Uh huh. All right. All right. So I put the deer out and put a five ton strap. Now look at, look at, look at how that deer was eaten around That's the a, neck. I always go for more of the big sections of. But animals, he had to pick they? up his head to eat him like that. And look at, look at he's over here, and look at that rear leg is disjointed. He, that leg is pulled out of joint. I know for a fact that coyotes, when they eat dead animals, they always go to the middle section for all the basic meat they want. Most animals. Yeah. But that does not look like a coyote to go after a neck like that. And all that, that leg is, that leg is really extended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's moved from that location, see how the angle, to now being straight out. So he's right, he's right here. He's right here. Uh -huh. I tied to that tree. All right. Then look what happens to him next. Right forward is gone. Uh huh. Uh, that's crazy. And look at that right rear leg or left rear leg. It's uh. really distended. <laughs> but look at this bone. What it? What is this? What kind of bone is that thing? It's not a deer bone. Uh uh. Doesn't look like a deer bone to me. It's not a joint. Because if it was a joint, you would see a ball at the end of it, wouldn't you? Yeah, this would be a joint. I mean, it's like a... It, I, I don't know what it is. It looks like... It looks like his front leg, but fused. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not fused. I mean, he, he's not fused. His front leg is fine. His front leg is fine. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. But this isn't the shoulder either, though. The shoulder doesn't look like that. If you look at the deer carcass. Almost looks like a tool or something to me. Huh. Then the buggers, little buggers. He got all deteriorated. Look how he's deteriorated. And they pulled it on him some more. Can you see, Mom? Mm -hmm. Then look what they did to me. Look at They cut it and took <sighs> it away. <laughs> huh. I, I, I can show you that I have it up there you can see how it's stretched but that was some stretching but all right so 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 you, you you're ticking me off you know this this deer's ticking me off right or this guy's ticking me off right mm -hmm. so I buy two iPhones a white one and black one so I charge one and I put it on the neck and I I don't have the picture here of where I put, I, but I put it right around the deer's neck, real tight around the deer's neck. Nice place for it. Um, and and then I had I, you know, I, you know, my search, and then I had a couple other guys. You know, th this thing get carried away. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know where it goes, right? Because one deer is carried that way. I know one deer is carried that way. One deer is carried out here in a big, a big square, and then it's gone. Uh, you know, 16, 15, 15, 16 deer were carried away. I got this guy, right? Look at this. So I, now the coyotes pulled on it and they pulled it out in the field out there. And there is the iPhone tied around the neck. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. And my brother called me and said, you know, that, that's been moved a little bit. I saw, so I'll, I'll go up there. So I went up there and took that picture. At, at, in the morning, but I stayed in my barn. I have a, a bedroom in my barn. I stayed there. In the afternoon, I came out. Or the next day, let me start over. This was in the afternoon. The next morning, I came out, and this. Is, so I'm here. And look at. Mm -hmm. there, there's the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And there's no head on the deer. Oh, jeez. And 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 look at the iPhone cord. <laughs> and that was tight around the neck. Uh huh. I mean, it was tight. Hmm. I, 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 I can see your knot right there too. Well, that that's that's where the yeah this was a, a to, mm -hmm. to hold to uh, you tighten it up, and then you you're supposed to hold it there. But I tightened it also around the deer's neck, and I tied a knot to to mm -hmm. keep it tighter. You know. Yeah. From coming loose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, that's mm -hmm. a, a latch type thing. Mm -hmm. It's 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 like parachute cord. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Paracord. But then, look at, look at the deer's, look at the deer's vertebrae. <laughs> it, it's chopped off. See the vertebrae? Mm -hmm. See the vertebrae there and this vertebrae over here? Mm. And look at, and there's just a little bit of hair gone around it. And I mean, where the coyotes eat, you know, they, 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 they do a lot of damage to the hair and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then here it's just, I took this to a butcher. I took this to a butcher. And he said, he's yawning. He said, I said, how is this head cut off? He, looked, he said, it looks like a cleaver. And I go, you think a cleaver cut? He said, well, yeah, it looks like a cleaver to me, you know. I can show you this deer up there, I have a deer. <laughs> he said, it looks like a cleaver. I go, okay. And he didn't know anything, so he told me, cut off with a cleaver, you know. We listened to Lee's stories and looked at the evidence that he had collected for over five hours. And the strange phenomenon just went on and on. From weird creatures captured on camera, unknown footprints, UFOs, galloping orbs of light, disappearing deer, and rays of light that start and stop in midair and wave for no reason. The gambit of evidence was overwhelming, so we headed home to plan for our nighttime stakeout. When we returned to Lee's property, we had a few theories of what could be causing some of the light phenomenon. First of all, his field is hay, and under certain circumstances, usually when baling, hay has been known to catch fire. This is because it produces methane, and when it is baled and compressed, it can be trapped with heat inside, causing it to start on fire. Lee's field is cut now, but our theory is that when the hay is long, it could be putting off methane gas, and the trail cams could be picking up the gas on camera, like a mist or a fog. So one of our tests that we will be doing is to check for methane. Uh, hi, how are you doing? Hello. <laughs> we're Derek. Yep, my mom, Lori. Yep. Um, we're in a stationary carpet somewhere. And then I have a camera. I want to run straight up to the sky over the whole time we're here. And then we'll see what we got covered from that and drop one or two other cameras there. And then I have three trail cams I want to set kind of on the perimeter for tonight. They shoot a picture every five minutes. Okay. Yeah. So then, so then how late are you going to run now? Not be out there at night, or are you going to be? Scared? We'll be out here as late as you want us here, or let us. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go in and go to sleep. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You stay out as long as you want. Okay. My farm. So. <laughs> we returned to Lee's property on a bright sunny day in early August. First off, we wanted to capture as much data as possible while we were here, so we set up three trail cameras to take pictures every five minutes, even if they were not triggered. This would give us a few hundred pictures to look through. Next, we set up our base camp with the van directly in the middle of the field and aimed our four satellite cameras around the field and up towards the sky. The four cameras on the van itself would cover the field and the area around us. Then, we set out to cover the entire field to scan for footprints and check baseline readings. Derek took the Eddy, our EMF meter, to detect for electromagnetic fields. Ma took her Ovilus, which can also detect EMFs, and other readings as well as anything that wants to communicate directly. And I set out with a methane detector and a radiation detector. If something was on the property, we wanted to find it. We spent the next few hours walking up and down and back and forth covering every inch of Lee's property.
36, 38, 37, 35. Hey! What? It's not significant yet, but this is the highest point I've had for radiation. What is that? 38. Now it's down to 30. It's gone. It's just dropping now. 23, 21, 19, 20, 21, 20. Sixteen. It got up to thirty eight. Six sixteen p.m. Just fixed my memory card and my camera after it died for whatever reason, unknown error. Hopefully, we didn't lose all the data on there. Six fifty one p.m. Saturday, <sighs> August first. <laughs> Five hours to go, <laughs> plus <laughs> ten minutes. After a thorough sweep of the entire field and property, we didn't find anything too extreme or out of the ordinary. So we headed back to the van for the night stakeout to wait and watch until sundown. Um, I see a UFO huh? over yonder. A hot air balloon. <laughs> it's a hot air balloon. <sighs> yep, he gets all kinds of stuff out here. He was wrong about the pattern, but it's red and white. <laughs> red, white, and blue, yeah. It's it's blue, blue, and then red and white stripes up and down. There's the second one! Oh, Jesus! What a treat. Two hot air balloons in one day. It's this weekend. What a treat. <laughs> <laughs> What color is that one, Derek? It's different. It's dark on the bottom to me. So it's what white and purple, yeah. or white and blue, or I mean, it looks like white and purple. I think it's got red somewhere on it. God. Well, <laughs> what? Is he wrong? No. Oh, jeez. It's got it's got like a. Purple stripe. I didn't notice it until I zoomed in more, but yeah, it's got the this? purple stripe. Why do you think my vision's so so good lately? I just I would have told you they were both gray. <laughs> well, that one I can tell has a darker me. bottom. The other one was just gray. I don't know what that was. Cool. I think it's like running through the corn. That's what it sounds like. Like knocking down brush. There, doggy, doggy, doggy. <laughs> there, doggy, doggy, doggy. Don't come up right here, doggy, doggy. Which way do UFOs usually come from? <laughs> 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 Ew, and 
and this is how Barnaby died. Ew! It's like ice cream. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> it's in your beard oh, too. Yeah. It's only a little bit. You can just wipe it with your hand. It's okay. I got a napkin. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> What's down here? The sun's going down. So is this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to keep our strength up for the seeing the dog man. <laughs> You're just gonna leave that in the middle of the field? Oh God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. This is going to be a great episode. <laughs>
10.14 p.m. Saturday, August 1st. Happiness. Special hunting. Oh. Several. I'm touching the damn thing. Special hunting. Several. Oh. I was I grab it by the antennas. What are we hunting? George. See, but yet if I grab it by the what antenna. Special hunting. Yeah. Happiness. Happiness. Special oh, hunting. Was but then it then, then you know, and then I can grab it white. and it doesn't do anything. What did? What the firefly? No, there's a little sign of tree line meat. Over here? Yeah. You. It could be. It was changing from pink to yellow and stuff when you were sleeping. It was really cool. That's why I tried waking you up, but you don't want to get up. It was cool. I thought it was pretty cool. Anything else, George? You like us out here special hunting? Ooh. Makes you happy that we're out here hunting? Or are you hunting? That's not good. Hunting federal. Yeah. Screw. No, nobody's looking through IR. <laughs> I thought you were, so I didn't. Not anything can come up on you now. Where are you, George? Now you don't want to talk? You want to go back in your bag? Okay. Back in the bag. Noise. Oh. Make noise? There's a light over there. Is that a star or a... I see it. Are you... Where are you? Make. Swim. I don't know what that is. It's coming this way. Agreed. Is that... Is that you, George? Are you coming? Don't make us swim. We don't swim. Derek, can you swim? Yeah. Okay. Save us. We don't have to. Yeah, we can't swim. I don't know what that is. Good. Should we get in the van? <laughs> see if you can see it on IR on there. That. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, that looks the same as the other one. Here, now, can you see it behind me? Now, yeah, there could be two of them. Is that a flight tractor or something? Look at that. That doesn't look like an airplane, though. Look at, can you see behind me? In here? Not at all. <laughs> can you, you can't see it? Oops, there it goes. Oh, yeah, that's just because you're not in focus. Well, but then my hand gets in the way. Yeah. I lost it. What am I supposed to be focusing on? should be on? past us, though. I lost it. This one should be the one ahead of us here. Is. There's one over there. I lost it. So who was that? Remember? I lost it. See, now, if he's looking at that through his scope, it looks like an orb. Yeah, but it wouldn't be at ground level. I know. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Now you hear it. Right? Yep. Probably wondering where that laser's coming from. Uh, 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 yeah. The CAPS van is a self-contained research vehicle specifically designed for our needs in the field. It can run on 110 power via a portable generator or it can be plugged into a regular house outlet via an extension cord. When we are out in the field on a short-term investigation like tonight, it runs off of a deep cycle marine battery that gets its charge from the van's alternator when the vehicle is running or via a set of solar panels on the roof when we are parked. It has more than enough power to run all of our equipment in the van without an issue for a full night of investigating. If, for any reason, we do drain the deep cycle battery, there is also a backup power supply. 
typically used for when you lose power at your home office and don't want to lose what you're working on on the computer. It gives you enough time to save and safely turn off. The backup battery has enough power to run the security camera system for one hour before it shuts down. And that is the only thing plugged into our backup. If the battery backup kicks in, there is an alarm that goes off to alert us that we're running on backup power and not the deep cycle battery. We have tested this with all of our equipment running, so we are 100% sure of these facts. So, when the van starts having power issues in the middle of our investigation, something is seriously draining our power. Nope. Just gonna kill that battery. Hmm. When that. We'll stop charging all this stuff. I'm not. Well, oh, you're charging. Oh, this is no, not. Not charging anything at the moment. Oh. The camera doesn't have any light. No. I don't see any. That's that weird little silver camera. It doesn't yeah. have any light. Nope. Maybe it's just that time. Turn everything off. What do you say, George? Ed? Okay. You want to talk through a voice box instead? Got anything? What? Try. Oh, good. Alive? Yep. You set up. Well, there's another light over there going down. Like you ate the peanut butter. I was like, what did I eat? That's your thing. Like if you eat like toast and peanut butter, you know? Yeah. Mm. Well, as long as it was eat? sealed, I wouldn't eat it now. I mean, in another day or whatever, I wouldn't eat it. You don't think I should go have some more? No, well, it's still now, but you know so many hours, maybe not. Turn around and look up in the sky. So is that Venus? No, it's not moving. <laughs> it's not moving. The triangle's alive. You haven't said anything else. What's the matter with you? Okay. <laughs> I just slap him and then he talks. Telepathy. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you haven't said anything else. Telepathy. <laughs> I don't need to speak out loud. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, he comes up with the right answers. I don't know. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell him to kill the van.
Yeah, I don't know. I want to stay out here another hour, but I mean, there's nothing, mm -hmm. you know. The only thing we can do at this point is, um, I mean, we can stay out here. The van's just going to kick it. Mm -hmm. That shuts down all the security cameras. Are you doing that? As aggression. Okay. <sighs> As aggression. Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? As, As aggression. aggression. I got chills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, you know. I, I think we need to leave. I think so. Do you want us to leave? It feels like all of a sudden, like, the van's going to shut off and then something's yeah. going to happen. Do you want us to leave? Do you want us to stay? Answer. Stay or leave. Battery just died. Did Up and at him, Derek. Mm. Up and at him. Although we planned to stay till at least midnight, it seemed that something didn't want us there anymore. So we packed up the van and drove around to pick up the three trail cameras that we had placed earlier. Each camera was set to take one picture every five minutes, no matter if it was triggered or not. However, two of the three cameras didn't take a single picture the entire time that we were there. The third trail camera that was placed directly behind the van at the tree line worked perfectly, and it captured these images of what looks like something hovering above the van and to the east. Whatever it was, it showed up right at the time that we decided to leave. The security camera facing that direction towards the sky also malfunctioned, and we have not been able to use the IR function on it since, and it has had to have been replaced. So, what does all this mean? Well, we didn't find anything out of the ordinary when we did our ground level sweeps, and we didn't find any flying objects that couldn't be explained with our eyes or binoculars. We heard a lot of animal noises, from dogs to grunts, and something running through the cornfield, but no bipedal dogman came to visit us. We leave with more questions than answers, so rest assured this won't be our last trip to Wisconsin's version of the Skinwalker Ranch. We'll see you next time. This was fun. Yeah.